Hi there. Welcome to another After School Tech Tips with the Tips team. My name is Bernice and today we're going to show you a few strategies for student collaboration in Google Docs. So without further ado, let's get to it. So my very first step to you is to talk about sharing settings. Now, as you can see here, I've already shared this document, but I want to show you what other options you have when it comes to student collaboration. So if I click on the share button here, you're going to see I've already shared it. Um, but you do have two different things that you can have students become. Students can either be an editor, meaning that they can access each other's work in its entirety. So they can delete things, they can add things, they can change things, all everything. Now, if you have students that you're concerned about that piece, you can also have them be a commenter instead. Commenter would mean that they can only um, create comments in it, but they would not be able to delete and add things accordingly. So keep those pieces in mind. For the purpose of this demo, I am going to keep Amanda as an editor because editors can both edit and comment. So um, my second piece then is to make sure if the two students or three or four or five are all working together, that they understand that they can see each other using the colored cursor and profile pic to see where others in the document are writing or whether they're even on the document to begin with. So I can see here Amanda is on this document. Um, I can go ahead and write my name in this document. And if the other student then goes ahead and writes their name, you'll notice that it pops right in. You'll also notice that in real time, you can see exactly where their cursor is. Um, and so you can make sure that they know not to write on top of each other accidentally. Now, the third piece that I have then is to show them version history. Let your students know that they can access version history and so can you. So in version history, you can see exactly which individual was responsible for what portion based upon the highlights that you can see here. There are colored dots that are associated with each individual person. So you can see here that the green dots that are associated with me are then highlighted in green, and the purple dots that are associated with Amanda are then highlighted um, accordingly as well. If you click on the arrow, you can then expand it into a more detailed view, and you can see exactly what each individual did if you click on each part. Um, and you can keep going in to see exactly who was responsible for what. This is a great way to let them know that they are held accountable for what they did in collaboration in the document and to ensure that they both or everyone is involved in collaborating in the document as well. Um, the fourth thing that I wanted to talk about is to have students then use the inline comment feature, especially if you're dealing with asynchronous collaboration. So where students are not working on the document at the same time. This is really good for things like um, reviewing a document or editing a document. Maybe you're giving feedback on an essay, like student feedback one on one to each other. Um, and this is a great way to highlight different pieces. So for example here, I can go ahead and highlight um, this sentence. I can click add comment and I can say, I don't quite get this question. Um, can you look at this? And so I can go ahead and click comment um, and Amanda now is able to see this. Amanda also is able to reply accordingly. So you can see here that I can go ahead and say, oh, um, I got this and when they reply, it's going to show up right away. Another really cool piece to this is if you click the at symbol or put in the at symbol, you can type in their name and this will then send them a direct email um, so that they have a email saying that, hey, there's a comment for you in this document. So again, a really great way to ensure that asynchronous collaboration piece. So the way you create a voice note is you can use read and write um, for Google Chrome. So up in the top right hand corner here, you can see this puzzle piece. Um, what we have here is we have voice notes. Voice notes is a really great way. Um, so if I go ahead and um, highlight this, I can go ahead and click on the voice note button and I can go ahead and start recording. Now, when you do this, 
you can then start talking, 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 um, and it is just going to record what um, they want. Now I'm going to do this um, with um, Amanda's one, and so it's going to make a comment in the whole piece. Once it comments then, you can then click the stop button. And once you click the stop button there, and then you can press comment, um, and you'll see here that Amanda's comment is going to show up. And so there it is. Um, and I can go ahead and click on, click on the play button, and that's actually going to play what Amanda said out loud. So again, really great way to have students collaborate with each other and be speaking to each other, even if they're not in the same place at the same time. And that's it. Um, I hope that helped. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to the tips team or check out our uh, website tips.epsb.ca for more information. Don't forget to subscribe. We hope to see you again. Thanks so much.